After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. South Africa's favourite tea is expertly blended to ensure that it remains of the highest quality consistently. It's this commitment to excellence that Five Roses puts into making the perfect cup of tea, which delivers its uniquely superior and distinctive taste. Five Roses salute South African women who too are committed to excellence. So today we'll be chatting with Lauren Bjorkus, author of international bestsellers The Shining Girls and Zoo City. She's joining us for a cup of delightfully fragrant Five Roses Earl Grey tea, an aromatic blend of quality African teas and the citrus flavour of the bergamot orange. So don't go away, we'll be right back after the break with Lauren Bjorkus and Five Roses, right here in The Loft. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Lauren Bjorkus, award-winning novelist and international bestseller, is back in our loft to discuss her work and life as an author. With added titles like comic writer, screenwriter and journalist under her belt, she certainly has the makings of a true literary genius. Welcome back to The Loft, Lauren. Thanks so much, Jane. Now, you started off as a journalist mm -hmm. and then you just decided... Not well, for me anymore. I've not got to quite. move on. <laughs> How did your journey move? I wanted to be a writer since the time I was five years old when I found out that you could make up stories for a living and get paid for it, that that was an Amazing. actual job. I was like, that's it, that's what I'm doing. Um, and it just took me a long time to get there. And journalism was one of the ways uh, that I managed to find a way to actually get paid to write. Yeah. Um, and to have adventures. I mean, journalism is actually about having adventures and like going out and talking to people and getting out of your comfort zone. Exactly. And that really fed into my writing. So I'm very grateful that that's the career trajectory I took. Totally. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for the Help to Read project. Oh, I love that. And it's always my favorite story to tell, just that reading is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the most important tool you can have when you're young to empower yourself with. So was your youth obviously just filled with Nancy Drew and just writing from a very young age? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I started writing stories when I was five, when I found out you could do it. Um, and yeah, Nancy Drew, Lord of the Rings, um, Dragonlance series. I was like a total geek. I, I kind of still am. Um, <laughs> but yeah, stories are how we understand the world. And it's how we understand who we are in the world and what the world does to us and, and how we react. And I think it's so vital to everyone that, that storytelling and reading is greater understanding and empathy. And now one of your stories, I think The Shining Girls, mm -hmm. is now optioned for a film and a TV show. I mean, that's so ridiculously exciting. How did that happen? Well, I have really great agents who uh, shop my stuff around. Actually, three out of my four novels have been optioned. Um, so Zoo City, The Shining Girls and Broken Monsters, which yeah. is going to be a TV show. Um, and there's some interesting directors attached. Uh, In South Africa, I mean, how does the business of it work? Mm. You write a book here, yes. gets published here, mm -hmm. and then what happens to it? Does it get released overseas or just here? And who picks it up? How does that happen? So I have an international agent, and my one bit of writing advice to everyone, apart from finish the damn book, <laughs> um, is to make sure that you don't sell world rights to your books. Okay. Because my agent sells every new territory. He's based in London. He's a really amazing sharp-nosed, like, pit bull of a man yeah. um, who just does the deals. And Amazing. he he sells it, you know, he sold it to 26 different countries. And every time it sells to a new country, that's free money. And it might be $500, you know, in Israel. But that's still, like, $500 free dollars. It's amazing. Does it um, get translated? It gets translated. And sometimes the translator will email me and, and, and say, what the hell is futsek and, <laughs> you know, these interesting South African words. What is it, Tsotsi? Um, and I have to, you know, we have an email communication and uh, it's really interesting to see how the process goes. And then you have a film agent who then approaches production companies to see who wants to... Okay, uh, so now that. which book is a TV show? So Broken Monsters has been optioned as a TV show by Endemol in the US. Okay. And they've got a very exciting uh, young director attached. Um, the Shining Girls has been optioned by Leonardo DiCaprio's production company. <laughs> I haven't met Leo. We haven't, like, hung out on his yacht. Okay, when you do, <laughs> you're going to say that there's this girl, Jeannie. Uh -huh, oh, absolutely. Like, yacht party for all. Um, and uh, they've, they've been speaking to the Imitation Games director, uh, Morton Tidlam, who is such an exciting, such an exciting director. The, the Imitation Game was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I'm really excited. We'll see what happens. None of it's guaranteed. You know, they're still in negotiations, so we'll see. I want to kiss your feet right now. <laughs> this is so exciting. Well, I am wearing great boots. You are wearing great boots. <laughs> what is The Shining Girls about? The Just Shining... so that I can have mm. some convo with Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Shining Girls is about a time-traveling serial killer, but really it's about how we talk about female victims. 
Um, and I think we've seen that so powerfully recently again with, you know, Oscar Pistorius' uh, sentencing. But it's the way we talk about victims and the way we talk about a victim as just, especially f femicides. The woman becomes just a bloody puzzle. She becomes um, this kind of sexy corpse. Yeah. You know, and, and all the media back at the time of the murder ran all these photographs of her a bikini modeling. And yes, she was a bikini model, but she was also a lawyer. Yeah. And it's devastating how we reduce it to either they have to be very beautiful or the atrocity has to be so horrendous. That's the only way they actually make the news and we actually care. And then we still don't talk about them as people. Exactly. So I wanted to look at that and I also wanted to look at how the 20th century has shaped us. So did that inspire the writing of the story? No, it actually <clears> happened <throat> just as I'd finished the book and it was about to come out. Then you're not only writing at the moment, you're also direct, uh, directing. You did Glitter Boys and Ganglands. Mm -hmm. What's that about? It was a documentary which came out a couple of years ago. I'd yeah. love to do another one, um, but it just, it's all time dependent. Um, it was about the biggest female uh, beauty impersonation, female beauty impersonation pageant. Female impersonation beauty pageant. Yeah, so it's men that take part in it. So it's men that take part. Um, some of them are trans, trans women. Um, okay. Some of so them very relevant to, to modern day. I absolutely. Suppose. Some of them just like to dress up, and it's just you know it's just fun. Um, and some of them are gay. Some of them are straight. It, and it's really really interesting to see. And it was it follows three different people. Um, the whole thing is up on YouTube at the moment illegally, but you can <laughs> try and find it. Um, and uh, we follow three characters, uh, well, three real people, a mechanic, um, a gay mechanic, Eva, um, the princess who is Caden, she's pre-op, um, she's about to go through the operation, saving wow. up for it, and she's won a whole bunch of beauty pageants, and she's very confident that she's gonna come through. Um, and, and a couple of other contestants as well, and it's just interesting to kind of follow their journeys over the run-up to the pageant and kind of get into their lives a bit. Yeah. So it's really, it was really fun to work on. It's such a fascinating process. Like you said, you're also working on a, on a horror comic book now as well. Yes. Writing that, and I suppose it's quite similar to doing a documentary, is almost, and I always want, like, question the, the process and how you come up with a story and compartmentalise different people's stories and then bring it into one story. Does that make sense no, to absolutely. you? absolutely. Well, it's nice to have a holding structure. With the documentary, obviously, that's the pageant. So, yeah. you know, we can explore lives and issues you know, using that as, as kind of the carrying thread. Yes. But it's all about people. Um, you know, there, there's a writing meme that, you know, people fight about whether writing, whether books should be about plot or plot driven or character driven. Yeah. And those two things are not, you can't separate them out. You can't have one without the you other. You can't have one without the other. If you have characters who are empty headed and a lot of stuff happening, that's a Michael Bay movie and it's really boring. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if you have mm. amazing characters who don't do anything, I, I don't want to watch that either or, or read that either. You know, I want, yeah. I want the characters to go somewhere and to take me on a journey and for the journey to be happening inside them as well. Where do you draw inspiration from and where do you get ideas from, especially with some of the stuff you write, because they are quite far out there. Yes, no, my stuff is pretty weird, but it's also, it's also nice to use these kind of fantastical elements like time travel with a serial killer yeah. as a way of kind of shining a light on things that maybe we're tired of talking about. I mean, do we really want to have another conversation about violence against women? It's exhausting. Yeah. And fiction becomes a very powerful way of kind of exploring these themes. And by having this kind of distortion of reality, you can just create enough distance that people come to it fresh. Mm. Um, but I get my ideas from everywhere. Uh, with the horror comic, it's called Survivor's Club. I'm writing it with um, a very good friend of mine, Dale Halverson. Yeah. It's what if the 80s horror movies were real and where are those kids today? When you write nowadays, when you write a novel or when you write like a comic like this mm -hmm. one, do you think about it in a, in a, like in a book version mm -hmm. or do you consider digital as well? Like how can, how can people find your comic? Is it, is it online? It or? is online as well. Okay. Um, so you can get it at any good comic store. There are a few in South Africa, um, like Reader's Den. And like a proper comic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then uh, bookstores will also be carrying the trade paperback, which is a graphic novel, which is all the issues collected together. Um, and it is online at Comixology or Amazon. So okay. you, can, you can buy it for your iPad right now. Please Amazing. do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> so considering you do quite a fair amount of dark, quite intense mm -hmm. writing, you balance it out with feel-good stuff for kids. Yes, absolutely. So I did a Wonder Woman story for kids earlier, uh, well, last year. Yeah. Um, specifically set in Soweto, and it's about two little black girls, and it's about the power of the imagination. Um, and I'm working on a project which is coming up soon with a major brand. We're doing a, this incredible creative 
book where I write little stories about monsters, like the oogle, which has eyes all over, um, or a vampire bunny, but you don't have to worry because it only drinks carrot juice. <laughs> and we want kids to be able to draw them. So that's going to be happening later this year. And I'm so excited about that project. It's really fun, and it's going to be so cool to like try and spark kids' imaginations. Brilliant. It sounds amazing. Thank you so much for coming through. Best of luck. Oh, I really hope that all of you. your stories get turned into these amazing TV shows and movies. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much for chatting to us. Thanks, Jeannie. Mastering one profession is hard enough for most of us. Lauren not only reigns as a best-selling author, she excels at literary arts across the board. Five Roses salutes all exceptional South African women. May your journey lead to excellence, whatever your chosen field. Now, we're giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of their delicious teas. So, to stand a chance to win, simply SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city, to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50, and T's and C's do apply. So visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for details. Now, join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to another exceptional South African woman. And until then, remember that nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses.